When was the last time you made a mistake? It's May and we're talking about mistakes this month. And as we do, I think another way of exploring the theme of mistakes is simply to say, hello, we're all human. But I invite you to just take a moment and think about the last time you made a mistake. I'm not as interested in what the mistake was as how you feel when you acknowledge to yourself that you made a mistake. Now, of course, some mistakes are much bigger than others, but if you consider the notion that you made a mistake, do you feel like you have to think of something really big? Or can you look at some of the smaller things that are part of everyday life? This month, I hope that we will all loosen up with the notion of making mistakes and begin to even welcome the fact that we do as proof of the fact that we're growing, that we're human, that we're exploring, and that there's no way to learn without making mistakes. I think our culture, our world is making it increasingly hard to make mistakes. You know, for a while, people like politicians couldn't acknowledge that they made a mistake or the news media would go for them. If doctors say they made a mistake, they'll get sued for malpractice. There are so many people who simply professionally can't acknowledge that they make mistakes. But I also think in our personal lives, there is more and more difficulty with people simply being able to say they made a mistake and move on. If you look at some of the shaming that occurs on social media about mistakes made on Twitter or Facebook, you can't simply apologize, delete it, and move on. In many cases, people get so focused on it, and there's no apology that's big enough. So how do we navigate that terrain? That's what we'll be looking at this month as we explore mistakes. I think it goes back to the creation story of this culture, of Western culture. The idea that a perfect, omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing God created human beings in God's image and then made a perfect garden for these human beings, Adam and Eve, to live in and said, but, in the story, you can't eat the apple of the tree of knowledge. Well, you could say that the serpent and Eve made a mistake, and certainly people do. They call it disobedience. They call it the fall from grace. Or you could embrace the fact that Eve was curious and wanted to know just what the tree of knowledge would bring. But the curiosity was hardly rewarded. Instead, Adam and Eve were cast out of paradise forever, cursed to kill one another. Women were cursed to suffer in childbirth. And this whole notion of original sin and people being inherently bad came into the world. Native American storyteller Thomas King asks, how would our world be different if instead of that creation story, we had a story where many beings together were wrestling with creation, were fighting and bickering with one another, were many of them making mistakes, all of them in relationship with one another, creating the world from that kind of chaos, that kind of imperfection? What kind of world might we live in now? I wish I knew. I grew up in the world where blame and shame and labeling things to be abominations of God and outside of God's view if they weren't obedient. I grew up in that world. Even though I did not grow up in the Jewish or Christian tradition, I grew up Unitarian Universalist, but that is the centering story of our Western culture, really. And so what does that say to us about our ability to be good people who make mistakes? Go back to your 
imagining a mistake you had made. How did you feel when you thought about it? Did you feel, yep, matter of fact? Did you feel ashamed? Did you go into, oh my God, what can I do? How can I make it up? Now, I'm not saying that we don't need to atone for mistakes, that if we make a mistake, we need to correct it the very best we can. And we certainly need to apologize. But what we don't need to do is wallow in guilt and label ourselves by that mistake. That labeling of people by a mistake is so prevalent in the way that news stories talk about people. So somebody who has been convicted of a felony becomes a felon. They become defined by their mistake. That's certainly true for people who are in prison. For even the smallest reasons, they are labeled as prisoners, and they are labeled by that mistake. But for many of us who are in the free world, we also feel in our minds that it's our mistakes that shape how other people see us because we internalize that kind of shame that says we should be a little bit better than we are. You know that saying, God doesn't make mistakes. That can be a very healing thing to know if, in fact, you are born differently. If you are differently abled, if you look different, if you if your gender doesn't conform, to know that you are part of creation and you're not a mistake. And there are beautiful poems and songs that celebrate the fact that you're part of all that's made in God's image. And so that saying God doesn't make mistakes can be a very healing thing for people to know. To know that we are not mistakes, just as we are. On the other hand, that expression, God doesn't make mistakes, can be used in all kinds of oppressive and horrible ways. And so I remember when the AIDS epidemic was raging and people were saying this was God's punishment on homosexuals and God doesn't make mistakes. So many human imperfections, so many of the cruelties and the ways that we exclude people are attributed to God. And so what I know is that while every person is born whole and holy, no matter what the circumstance, we together as humans shape a culture which is not holy, which is simply human, which is riddled with mistakes, whenever people use God's name to justify oppression, that is blasphemy. And so, my friends, let's make mistakes this month. Let's allow ourselves to name the mistakes that we make as part of a life worth living, as part of the only way we can learn, and let us together create a forgiving and caring culture that does not isolate and remove people for mistakes, but rather draws them in and says, it's okay, it's okay. You're still part of the community. Hello, human. Hello, imperfection. Hello, mistake maker. Let's have a great May together.